So everyone, um, this is an announcement for all Washtenaw Audubon members. Our um, membership chair, Jessica Adamczyk, who's our host for the Zoom tonight, is going to be our new secretary for Washtenaw Audubon's board. And secretary is a board officer, so she needs affirmation by the membership at the annual meeting, which is the June membership. And so we'll, uh, someone will, um, I guess I will um, propose that Jessica be our next secretary and someone can second that. Um, Jessica's been our membership chair for four years, at least, yeah. She's done a great job. She's in the process of modernizing a lot of our membership um, uh, procedures and softwares, software and all that kind of good stuff. And she's out there meeting people when it's not COVID times. <laughs> she's a fabulous representative for our community and we thank her so much for her service. And Dana, Novak, who's been our secretary for over 10 years, is going to be moving to stewardship and she'll be looking after and helping organize activities related to stewardship and preservation and restoration for the Searles Nature Preserve that Washtenaw Audubon owns. And so Jessica is going to be taking over as our secretary. And so I'm going to propose that that be the case. And Mike is going to second that motion and all in favor. Yay! Usually we give a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. I am so excited to be stepping into this role. We're very lucky to have you. She's a professionally organized person with professional administrative skills. And we're very, very excited about having her as our secretary. Yay! And so we have a vacancy at membership chair. And if you are interested in that position, Jessica can fill you in on what some of the duties are that are associated with the membership chair position um, in a personal message, probably. Yeah. Um, We have some other really fun announcements. I don't know if we're done with this. I'm not done talking about how wonderful Jessica is. She's one of my best friends and her baby is two and he's the cutest little boy I've ever seen. Other than that, <laughs> um, we have a brand new community survey that Jessica and Keith, our treasurer and Matt, our field trip chair have been working on um, a community survey about what your needs are um, as members and parts uh, part of the community of Washtenaw Audubon, whether you're a current member or whether you're a person on our contact list. We'd love for you to fill out the survey. Um, Jessica, is it posted on our website? It is, and I will also post the link to the survey in our chat here. Okay. Um, we encourage everyone who's attending our programs, whether you're a member or not, we want to hear from you because we value you as our community and we are serving you, whether That's you're right. in Edmonton, Ontario, and this is your first program that you, you, you've attended, or if you've been a member with us for decades. So um, I'll post the survey. It should take about 10 minutes to complete and it can be completely anonymous or you can share your name if you'd like. And I think it's not on our Facebook page yet, but it's going to, but it is on the website. So check it out on the website if you um, would like to fill it out and we would really value your input. Okay. Jessica tells me that people are filling it out already. So don't miss out. Um, we have our annual meeting, which we're reviving the tradition um, since I archived the old newsletters from Washington Audubon going back to the 1950s, apparently um, annual picnics were a thing with Washington Audubon in the 70s and 80s, and even annual camping trips. 
Um, but we're going to have our picnic on July 18th um, out at Dexter here on Metro Park. Uh, if there isn't an announcement on Facebook yet, there will be soon and, it's, and it is posted on the website. Um, and during that picnic, we'll be talking about our survey results as well as giving away the Wingnut and the Acorn Award. Um, the Wingnut Award goes to the adult who saw the most species of birds in Washtenaw County during the previous year. Um, I don't know if I should give it away, but I think we all know it's, I shouldn't give it away. Okay, you got, you got to come to the meeting to find out how many species they saw and um, who they are. And we have an Acorn Award winner as well this year. The Acorn Award goes to the young birder who saw the most species in the year. And I believe she is on this call. I'm not sure if I can give her name away, but she's going to be getting an award as well. And she saw a boatload of birds last year. Yay. <laughs> oh, where is she? I know she was there anyway. So you might wanna put July 18th on your calendar. It's um, noon-ish, bring your own food or bring a potluck and uh, we'll have a good time all together. Do we have any other announcements? Nope. Okay. Um, Mike, do you wanna talk about our upcoming programs and introduce Don because we're so grateful and fortunate to have Don Shelfont here as our speaker. Um, and we have some programs coming up in, this, in the fall, but our programs take a hiatus for the summer so we can all go on vacation. Take it away, Mike. Mike, you're muted. There we go. Uh, September 15th, uh, John Mills will do a program on birding the Rockies. He was out there, I think, for three weeks, I believe he said, and took a bunch of pictures, and they're quite good. Uh, October 20th, we do not yet have a speaker. Uh, uh, that will be announced on our website and Facebook page. November 17th, uh, Dave Dister will uh, give a program on Costa Rica. And then December 18th, we have the Ann Arbor Christmas Bird Count. And that's it so far. But tonight. And, and we're hoping that we'll be able to hold in person meetings in the fall. Hmm. Right. But we don't know if we don't have confirmation yet. Right. Right. Uh, but tonight we have none other than Don, the man, Chalfant, longtime Washtenaw Audubon member, uh, master birder of Washtenaw County. Uh, Don had lots of big day records, along with Roger Wikes as his main competitor for many years before the younger generation came along and started doing phenomenal sorts of things. Um, Don is a past president of Washtenaw Audubon. Uh, he led lots of field trips. Uh, he also leads field trips at his winter home in Florida. And he's got a huge ABA uh, list. What is it, 780 something, Don? He's probably muted. He's probably muted. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, he got a, a big Michigan record and a, I think he's probably number two in Washtenaw County as far as number of sea species seen behind only Mike Kelb. And you're numeral three, he's number three. I passed him. Oh, Roger passed him, my God. Uh, Roger Passing. Okay. Just Don's, out of luck. Uh, yeah, yeah. I won. <laughs> Don, Don's number three, in, uh, in, uh, uh, which is not bad. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Don, uh, please.
do your magic thing. Thank you. Don, you're muted still. Should we call him? Don, you're muted. No. Uh, I bet he's talking and we can't yeah. hear him. Yeah, he's talking. Now, there I am, okay? There we go. Far, right. Start over. Okay. Um, uh, you, you'll be indulging uh, two of my passions tonight. One of which is, the, of course, the fact that I'm a birder and photographer of birds. Uh, that's the, the photography is a recent thing. Uh, but I also have collected van birding vanity license plates. And as you can tell by the one on the, the uh, title page, I've been doing this for quite a while. Um, a, couple of, uh, a couple of words about vanity plates in general. As you can see, this one was taken in 1991. At least it was a 91 plate. Um, states, um, you apply for, um, uh, birders apply for these um, specialized plates and you will you would be the only one in the state to have that license plate someone probably already had b-i-r-d-e-r -E so this person um, uh, decided to have b-i-r-d-r -E instead um, each state has a number a limit on the number of digits that can be placed on the plate plate uh, the limit in in uh, michigan by the way is seven um, anyway and uh, all of the plates that i'm going to show tonight um, were in my original collection. They uh, either they were, I had three ways of getting these plates. One is that I've taken the photographs myself and I've, uh, I've birded pretty much all over the country. So I've been to some of the hot spots in places like uh, Peely and uh, Whitefish Point and McGee Marsh and Cape May and Hawk Mountain. Um, these places have a lot of birders with vanity plates. And so I, uh, I circle, I circle the, uh, the parking lots taking, uh, taking pictures of plates. Um, so most of them are mine. I also have uh, uh, friends who've donated their, their plates that they've seen to me. I got a few just last week, in fact. Um, and I have some friends in, well, all over who do that for me. And third, um, I've located a couple of other vanity birding vanity plate collectors and we've arranged to tr make a few trades so the <laughs> plates you're going to see uh are mostly are my photographs all of the bird photos will be mine um i hope you will um, indulge the plates and i hope you appreciate the uh the bird photography um well let's get started um as i can as you see a lot of uh, a lot of people a lot of birders uh, just put their one of their favorite birds on their vanity plate, and this was mine. Um, this is my plate, um, the screech owl. Um, as a matter of fact, this was my third choice. Uh, the uh, the fir my first two choices uh, for a plate had already been taken uh, by someone else, so I uh, I got screech, which I've had now for oh about about twenty five years. The um, it's, and it's resulted in some interesting uh, things. And this is, as you can see, uh, that's one design of a Michigan plate. And this, uh, whoops, I just did, the, uh, did I'm sorry. Um, and um, it's resulted in, in some interesting conversations. A lot of people, I remember a guy in um, Florida at the supermarket, uh, the grocery store came up to me and said, that license plate of theirs, uh, yours, so what, uh, What's that screech? What's that mean? And I explained to them that it was an owl. And uh, he said, oh, I thought maybe you were from Newfoundland. And I, in my innocence, I said, well, what makes you think I was from Newfoundland? He said, screech is the name of a local moonshine made in Newfoundland. And, and I, I looked it up. Uh, and in fact, that's correct. I heard the guys uh, on Hockey Night in Canada talking about it one night. <laughs> and indeed is, is uh, but I got the plate because of the owl not because of the uh, moonshine. Um, this, is, this is my very favorite bird. Uh, I share this, uh, this, this favorite bird with uh, 
Roger Wakes, I believe it's his favorite bird as well. And if you've ever seen one, um, I can understand why um, it may be your favorite bird too. I've never seen a bird that is absolutely so beautiful mm. as a small-tailed kite. Um, I'm gonna go fairly fast here because uh, uh, there's a lot to be seen. I tried to choose plates, by the way, that were from um, the states other than, uh, other than the usual, Ohio and Michigan. I think tonight you're gonna see plates from well, some oh, 34, 35 different states. I have, uh, I have every state in my, uh, in my collection, um, many of which you're gonna see tonight. The, I can tell in some cases, I'll, I'll also tell you where the picture was taken, although I don't think that's necessarily all that important. That, that photo was taken out on uh, <laughs> the bird that the, the road that everybody's talking about. Uh, I took it on, uh, on Vreeland Road. I saw a, a crane family, by the way, this morning on Embry Road. a black-bellied duck. It's a very entertaining duck. The picture was taken in Florida on uh, the license plate from California. <laughs> there are two laughing gulls. Uh, I think, uh, I don't think they're laughing actually. The plate, by the way, um, came from uh, Tony Lukering. I don't know if you are familiar with Tony. Uh, Tony has been all over. Uh, I met him first at uh, Whitefish Point where he was a counter. He was a counter at Cape May for a while. Then he went to uh, in Georgia, he worked on the, um, the Endangered Species Project for a while. Then he went to Colorado and he directed the Colorado Bird Conservatory. Then he went to Florida. Back in, Now he's back in Kansas. Um, uh, he, he writes a, a regular column for Birding Magazine on bird identification. But he is a, a gull expert. I included the Bohemian waxwing because I, even though the Bohemian does not occur in Florida, because I thought you'd be more impressed with a Bohemian waxwing than a cedar waxwing, although they're both pretty impressive birds. By the way, that photo was taken right here in Washtenaw County out on Schneider Road. And there I was, I thought of including having a, an indigo bunting, but I thought you'd there again, I thought you'd be more impressed with a painted bunting. Picture was taken in Florida, of course. A good share of my photos are taken in Florida where I spend half the year now. That was not, that was taken out in uh, California. The rough leg hawk photo was taken at Whitefish Point. I don't remember where the, I think the rough leg uh, license plate, I think I got at Cape May. I don't remember for sure. Some people include, uh, of course, the uh, scientific names. That's the genus of barred owl and, and several others, including the great gray and the spotted. The Pomeran Jaeger picture, uh, the, of course the, the plate is from Pennsylvania, but the, the uh, Pomeran Jaeger photo was taken in Florida on a pelagic trip. I had to choose between American and least bitter, and I thought the least bitter photo was a little more impressive. The 
Siskin was taken at Whitefish Point. The plate was probably taken at uh, Presque Isle, Pennsylvania. And that plate was probably taken at Point, uh, at, uh, Point Pelee. I used to go there regularly, but uh, haven't been there in quite a while. Probably need to go it again to get some more license plates. Huh? This is just about the closest I've ever been to a bald eagle. Um, with my with my long lens, I can get pretty good pictures of birds that you know maybe 50 yards away. But this one was uh, actually was on the side of the road. I was on one side of the road, and it was on the other. I don't think I was more than 20 yards away from this bald eagle in Florida at Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. There's the genus of fish crow. We have to teach our, in Florida, we have to teach all our visitors that uh, when they hear a crow, it, uh, it may not be an American crow that they're familiar with. It may be the fish crow, which has a different call than the American crow. They look very, very similar, but they have a different call. Hmm. That photo was taken at a place that's been mentioned several times tonight already, out at uh, Cherry Hill Preserve. <laughs> that's when the chat was still considered to be a warbler. Now it's no longer uh, in, in the warbler family. It's uh, pretty much in a group all by itself, I think. That photo was taken out at, uh, uh, oh, at the, um, oh, I know what it was, at, out at the Big Sit at the Independence Lake, took that photo. And there's a kestrel. You don't usually get very close to kestrels. You usually see them on uh, power lines, but this one was on a post out at, uh, of course, in Florida. Birds are so much more approachable in Florida, and so much um, so can photograph more e much more easily. Um, and there again, uh, this is a bird you don't expect to see in Florida, but that photo was taken in Florida. <laughs> And like most of my uh, warbler photos, um, I think most of them were probably taken down at, uh, at McGee Marsh. Common Nighthawk is a member of the Nightjar family, of course. There's a wood stork dining. I just took this uh, photo this uh, this February in Florida. It's just about the closest I've ever been to a wood duck. They usually spook pretty easily, but this one was, eh, I was probably 20 yards away. The herons and egrets in Florida, however, are very, very approachable. Um, I, some people don't believe this, but um, but one thing I don't joke about is birds. Um, I, I have been I have been so close in Florida to a red-shouldered hawk that I had to move back to focus. Uh, it was so close it violated minimum focusing distance. I had the same experience with a limpkin once in Florida. I had to move back just to focus the camera. They are very, very approachable. Most of my loon photos are winter plumage because I see a lot of them in winter or in the winter in Florida. And most of them are just like that, although not as close as that. 
that photo was taken in California um, in the summertime. And I, I just, uh, I couldn't, I, I just, I must have scoured the web and ID to make sure that it was really a yellow-billed loon because yellow-billed loons just aren't supposed to be in California in the summertime. Um, but then I decided to check the uh, rear bird alert in California and found that uh, I wasn't the one who, I wasn't the first person to see it. Someone else had. It was only the third or fourth summer record of a yellow-billed loon in in, uh, in California. That would take what was taken at uh, Bodega Bay, which you people who are, uh, are movie buffs will know that the movie The Birds <laughs> was filmed in Bodega Bay. There's my favorite duck. The northern pintail, elegance personified. There's a snowy, golden slippers, and there's the trumpeter swans that we mentioned earlier out at um, uh, Sio Church and uh, Parker. Harrier. I've I've seen so many Harriers in in uh, at McGee or at uh, Merritt Island, but um, I've never been able to photograph one that was perched. I only see them in flight. It seemed that every time I do see one perched, it's either too far away or I don't have my camera. The rough grouse was photographed up at Whitefish Point. The morning warbler, I think, was photographed at uh, McGee Marsh. No surprise there. White crowned pigeon was photographed in the Everglades, Everglades National Park. Ah, that's the best picture I've ever had of, of taken of a, of a redhead. It was taken in Wisconsin, my, one of my favorite places there. Rock dove is a, is a strange bird. We consider it really a trash bird, but you know, look how colorful that bird is. If you went to a foreign country and you'd never seen a rock dove before and you saw them in a foreign country, you'd come back saying, boy, I saw these beautiful birds. They were iridescent and so colorful. And you could see them. They were all over town. <laughs> and yet we consider them trash birds here in the States. You can tell that's an old plate because when uh, that plate was uh, made in 1993, as you can see, uh, it was called the common snipe. Uh, since then, uh, it has been changed to the to Wilson snipe. Common snipe is, is now is a, is a bird that's a Eurasian snipe. That was taken in... Uh, in Florida, I think I took that over at uh, Fort DeSoto. And the photo and the plate, I think I, the photo was taken I, actually at, uh, in Maine. Hmm. And as usual, birds like this, birds of the marsh, most of the one were taken, taken in Florida. Either at uh, oh, either at uh, Merritt Island or uh, Vieira Wetlands or Orlando Wetlands. Those are my, or uh, now Lake Apopka. Those are my four favorite places to go to get uh, marsh birds. First time I ever saw a mountain bluebird was in Colorado. Uh, and I just couldn't believe it. it just it redefines blue. It's a, it's a it's a, a blue all to itself. It's just a gorgeous gorgeous bird. Um, and this photo was wasn't taken in Virginia, obviously. This one I think I took that in a, I think in Iowa. I'm not sure. There's an upland sandpiper, um, and you can tell if you look closely. You can tell by where it's standing. You can probably guess where I took the photo. I took it at the uh, Willow Run Airport, standing on a cyclone fence. I got this uh, reddish egret in mid-gulp. It was uh, dining on a what looks like a 
crayfish of some kind, small invertebrate, aquatic invertebrates. This is, uh, Roger Weichs and I always have a debate. I think this is the best photo I've ever taken. Um, it's my favorite, at least. Uh, it's a scarlet tanager, and it has been eating mulberry juice. And you can tell it's got just a little, little tiny drip of mulberry juice there uh, in its bill. And the plate is uh, the uh, is the genus, and the plate belongs to uh, Carl Overman, that most of you are familiar with. Outstanding Florida or uh, outstanding Michigan and world birder. The uh, plate belongs to Fred Pratt that I, I met birding in Florida, and we uh, ended up birding in uh, several places together, I think, as a result. Um, this is a buff-bellied hummingbird uh, that paid a visit to a feeder in Volusia County, where I spend the winters this, um, this year. And um, it's just... I had seen buff-bellied hummingbird in the state, and I'd seen it in, in Texas, but I'd never been able to photograph it. And oh boy, I was so excited to be able to get this photo. It's a stunner. The Brits, the Brits folks don't call them stunners; they call them they they say that's a that's a crippler. Um, and in order, to, and I, I talked to a once, guy once, and he said, in order for it to be a real crippler, it has to be of a crippler bird, too. It can't just be a crippler photo. And trust me, this is a crippler. Gadwall is one of my favorite ducks. I, the, 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 the feathering, feathering on, their, on their mantle is just absolutely gorgeous. You'll notice quite a few uh, Ontario plates sneak their way into my uh, presentation because most of them were taken at Peely. And the photo was probably taken, I'm pretty sure, at uh, Embry Road, which I think is just, berries are pretty much automatic on Embry Road. This picture isn't as clear as it uh, I'd like it to be. I was only about 20 yards away from that bird, but it was the heaviest rain fall that I've ever stood in ever to see a bird. Um, and you're probably not, if I gave you 20 guesses, um, you probably wouldn't believe where I took that picture. Uh, Roger knows because uh, I share a lot of this with Roger. Picture was taken in Florida. There's only, a, there's only been a three or four snowy owl records in Florida. So I went up to, uh, up to Tallahassee, or not to Tallahassee, near, uh, near Jacksonville to uh, get that. And it was absolutely pouring, pouring rain. But it was worth it. <laughs> Great Jay photo was taken in uh, Alaska, Denali National Park. King rail, of course, was taken in Florida, as you might guess. I think this license plate was taken in, uh, I think, I think probably up at uh, up at Whitefish Point. I get a lot of a lot of license plates up there. Now you don't see any photos here. Why is that? Well, I'll show you why. They come on the next one because it was plural. I thought we ought to have two different wrens, a sedge wren and a marsh wren. I think I got both of them with their tails up. This one was actually singing when I, uh, when I photographed it. One of the best series of photos I've, I think I've ever taken. Hmm. Carolina wren is so, so very common in Florida. 
uh, we hear them all the time, but we don't always see them. <laughs> They're far more uh, readily heard than seen. There's an ibis and, and you can tell by the really, really bright red legs and, and, uh, and face and bill that this is pretty much in breeding plumage. There's a, a Jeff Wilson. It was one of the leading birders in, uh, in Tennessee. And uh, somebody told me once about Jeff Wilson. They said, you know, his license plate is probably the best, the most accurate <laughs> plate ever. And then, uh, then later that week, I ran into Jeff Wilson and photographed his plate. And <laughs> he described himself as an old coot. And uh, uh, evidently, others agreed. Empid is uh, the the group of the group of small flycatchers that uh, are so difficult to identify unless you hear them. Um, the uh, we we had a gal in in Washington about twenty years ago who wrote a monthly letter uh, articles for the newsletter. Her name was uh, Betsy Perry, and she really was a great writer. And she said that the hardest hardest uh, birds to identify are Trappist flycatchers because, because they weren't allowed to sing or call. This is one of the, this is a bird, uh, this is a photo that I like to use as a demonstration of how great the cameras are this, these days. Laris is the group of, uh, is the genus of birds of which the Hearman's gull is a member. Um, I was, uh, the bird was in flight I was uh, standing without a tripod, without a monopod, and with my shoulders uh, not, not very steady. So I was moving, the boat was moving, and the bird was moving, and yet the bird, the photo is in almost perfect, perfect focus, which is a real tribute to today's cameras. That's the best uh, frigate bird photo I've ever taken. I was with uh, Karen Markey. We were chasing a uh, I think we were chasing a purple sandpiper in Florida. We didn't get the sandpiper, but I got the best uh, frigate bird photos I've ever taken. Here's a series of grebes. Um, the photograph is, or the uh, license plate is plural. So I decided to go whole hog and, and, uh, and, and show five different species of, uh, of grebe. This is pied-billed, eared, horned, western, and least. Peregrine photo was taken uh, right down on campus in Ann Arbor. And you can guess where the Osprey photo was taken. Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. One of the most popular um, license plates that I've found is this one. And the next uh, slide will show just how popular it is. Five different states. Uh, I have a, uh, there may be others that I don't have in my collection, but I have photographed uh, Shrike plates from five different states. Hmm. That was taken in uh, New Brunswick. And as you can see, some people, uh, there's seven, seven letters, but it's, uh, they somehow managed to say black and white in within seven letters. That's pretty creative. Uh, and a lot of, uh, a lot of the, ber the license plates are just as creative as that. They're pretty interesting. Uh, lots of photos here to look at four different photos in one slide. Uh, here are the Hack brothers. Here's their license plate. And here's the bird that is uh, the picture of their, it's the red-headed woodpecker. That's a four, that's the four letter uh, banders code for um, red-headed woodpecker. Uh, other people have used, uh, used four letter, uh, four letter banders code for on their plates too, because it's a, uh, uh, sometimes, as I say, there's a there's a limit to how many letters you can put on a plate.
Mm. That photo was taken at the Botanical Gardens the day after someone found it on a uh, Christmas count. It was hung it hang out in the it hung out in the same place for several days, I guess. And we uh, a bunch of us went out the day after the Christmas count to see it. It was very cooperative. <laughs> this is winter plumage of a red knot. Uh, our beach uh, at New Smyrna Beach, where uh, where Lori and I winter, um, has quite a few red knots uh, right on the right on the surf. Um, oh. In fact, I, the first time I ever reported anything to eBird, I think I reported a flock of 150 red knots and they wrote back and said that that was impossible. So I stopped reporting to eBird. <laughs> it was quite possible as Roger will attest. There's a black pole. Uh, that's, that's my favorite black pole photo and you can, you can see why, look at the legs. That's what lets you know when it's in winter plumage, that's how you know it's a black pole rather than a uh, bay breasted. In fact, we, when we don't know, we call them bay poles. There's a sharp shin. I just took this photo uh, this April up at uh, Whitefish Point. This is probably the the if you drove if you drove a road like uh, like Embry Road, it's a real contest uh, between the red-eyed vireos and the viries as to which one you hear more of. Red vireos are being very vocal right now. There's another corvid. The uh, magpies and uh, jays and uh, um, and crows make up that, and ravens make up the corvid family. Here's again, here's no, no, no birds. Aha, uh -huh. well, let's go to the next photo. Two birds, red-shouldered and ferruginous, two hawks. Here's two more, <laughs> Coopers and Harrises. I could have put any bird I wanted in here, I guess, but I decided to, to uh, show off a bird that we, uh, I guess I've seen several times, but uh, we had one, in fact, in Florida this winter, surprisingly. And for pelagic, I could have put any, included any species, but I, I'm limited to the birds that I have good photos of. So I, I put the bridal turn in. This is the Broadwing, which is a member of the Beautio group. Uh, red tails, red shouldered, and a few others are members of that group. I could have put any raptors I wanted here, I guess, but I decided here again to include some that I hadn't included beforehand and you, I thought might be uh, interested in seeing. Uh, this is interest, an interesting one. Um, the snail kite, it's a very immature uh, snail kite. Uh, snail kites uh, are so-called because they dine almost exclusively on, uh, on snails, um, apple snails. And this one um, has mistakenly picked up a very young turtle, probably thinking that it was an apple snail. Uh, it later, uh, I watched it for well, 10, 15 minutes, it wasn't getting very well, very far with the apple snail and finally dropped the, the uh, turtle back into the water. The prairie falcon photo was taken out in uh, Oregon a few years ago. There's one of the most entertaining and photogenic birds you may ever see. And by the way, it was not taken in, in Tennessee, by the way. <laughs> There's but one of the most one of the best named birds.
And there's an interesting uh, way to, to put uh, shear water, uh, to fit shear water uh, onto a, a, a plate that is limits uh, to seven, seven spaces. Our own uh, Maggie Jewett owns that plate. And guess where that was taken? <laughs> and the white-tailed ptarmigan was taken just exactly where you'd expect it to be taken, up on Trail Ridge Road in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park, which is probably the most popular place to see that particular bird on the continent. Peacock became uh, countable uh, when they added when they added uh, Hawaii to the ABA. Uh, accountability area. Uh, but there are, uh, by the way, some uh, some specific places in Florida where it's also countable. Uh, the photo, however, was taken in Hawaii. Now, those are all specific species. Um, here's a section on how some birders just, they just want to display their, their passion for birds and birding. Um, when I think of Whitefish Point, I don't know about you guys, I've been around longer than most of you, I guess. When I think of Whitefish Point, I think of Michael and Susan Kelb. They are, they are synonymous with, with Whitefish Point as far as, uh, far as I'm concerned. And there's one of my favorite uh, local uh, birding companions, Yako. By the way, the plates aren't necess don't necessarily belong to these people. I just thought it was a good excuse a good way to, uh, to share pictures of some of our local friends. There's one you all know, um, Yako Birds and so does Roger. Here's two birders, <laughs> Kathy and Karen. I think most of you know those people. Interesting, uh, this, these photos were taken um, I think the, the same day, um, the three of us, uh, Mike and Laith and I, uh, went up to uh, the northern part of, um, of Michigan chasing uh, a couple of birds, uh, which, uh, which I was just going to tell you what, what the birds were, but then it occurred to me that uh, it, it's, another, it's another interesting game you might want to play with people when you're on, a, on a, a birding trip, when you're in the car and on a long trip. Um, uh, Mike, Michael Kelb and I started this years ago. The question was, what are the, what are two birds that you saw in the same day that were the most unusual combination based on where you saw them? Um, and it, this, this arose because Michael and I both agreed that, uh, that high on the list was a, uh, a dove key and a a little blue heron in New Brunswick on the same day. Well, I bring that up because Mike and Laith and I saw in Michigan a painted bunting and a mew gull on the same day. That's the day those pictures were taken. I, th I guess you all know, know her and you also know why I chose that plate to show with her, or why I chose her to show with that plate, I guess. And if you don't know Tex, or didn't know Tex, um, to your, your, you missed a, one of the real fine birding gentlemen of the, of the state and <laughs> ever. He was a real classic. This is Joe's, uh, Joe Prochaska is a local birder, lives, I think, still in Dexter. Um, that's his plate uh, for the birds. And there's Dee's plate, um, which is uh, Latin for birds, I believe. And there's Alan. I don't, I don't know how many of you know Alan. He uh, wrote the, uh, the book, the uh, bird finding book to... Uh, to the state of Michigan. That's his license plate. And uh, 
Uh, the hummingbird is not named after Alan, but I thought it was the best one to uh, to put on on that particular uh, with that particular plate. And then uh, then there's a, a section here on just some birds. Just some folks just wanted to they just want to say they want to make a statement. Um, this person uh, either either is amused or wants you to be. Uh, this person is certainly uh, a fitness freak, it seems. And this person is probably a hippie or was a hippie and they're still groovy. And this person seems to be quite happy. And like most of us, this person likes ice cream. And this person wants you to smile. And this is an interesting way of spelling sublime. I suspect it's because someone had already used the letters I and E, and they used one and three. And there's no question about what the word is though. Then we get to the, my several my several favorites. Those of you who are familiar with Canadians know that they say A, A. This, this uh, plate was, uh, was Dave, uh, Dave Stringer. Dave was, uh, uh, he, he, he taught, uh, what was it? He taught, he taught it here in high school. Uh, and if you want to know what that plate means, it's poetic license. And my very favorite of all, BMS 24 seven. Anyway, I thank you for your attendance and your uh, attention and permitting me to share these hobbies with you. And I am grateful. And now I'm done. There aren't nearly as many people here now as there were when I started. So I guess it wasn't very good. <laughs> Don, I want to thank you so much for your presentation today here. I'm gonna help you stop sharing so we can see everyone's faces. Um, I have a question. Yeah, please, folks, add questions to the Q and A. Yeah, and, please. Yeah. I hope Laura, there's some oh, questions. Laura, please go ahead. Don, you mentioned that birds are much more approachable in Florida, allowing you to get closer. Yes. I'm wondering why that might be, and are there specific areas that that is more true? Well. I'm not exactly sure why. I just think that uh, they're more accustomed to people, I guess. Um, as you saw that, as I said, uh, I, I, as I said, there were a couple of birds that where I actually had to move back from in order to yeah. photograph. We had my dad, of course, it's a tribute to how patient he was. He had a great, um, a great egret coming into his yard and um, it took uh, it took four years, but it, it would uh, if you got within fifty yards of it, it would fly, uh, and it kept getting closer and closer. As I say, it took four years, oh, yes. but eventually, uh, he was hand feeding the egret. He would uh, he would catch um, uh, shrimp and fish in his in his uh, fish net off the uh, dock, and hand feed them to the uh, to the egret. And within a week of the time that the great egret was doing that, a, um, a, a great blue and a snowy would come all of a sudden. Uh, they, they came because they saw the great egret could do it. So I guess they came too. <laughs> That's so fascinating. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to get down to Florida more and well and, you could and, you could see by how close the, I mean I yes I do have a I do have a long lens but you could tell by how and I crop a little because I've cropped some of the photos of course but you can still you can tell a lot of those things like the the eagle and the osprey and those they were they were full frame photos uh-huh uh-huh that's it, it's so interesting uh and curious <laughs> thank you Hi, Michael and Susan. Oh, hey. 
All right. <laughs> hi, Don. I, want, I, I wanted to tell Jessica that that solid owl was in that part of your Christmas bird count area uh, that you covered this year. Yes. And it <laughs> was there the next day for pictures. Too. And it was actually there oh. the next year. It was. In the same tree. Yeah. I had another group and I said, well, last year <laughs> I walked up to the tree and there was the bird. Wow. You, you make, a, make a good point though. How often do we as birders remember that one experience we had at that one tree 10 years ago and every time we pass that same tree again, we think maybe that one same special bird will be there this time. <laughs> it's oh, really yeah. wonderful how we have these True. memories year after year of the places <laughs> you visit. Mm -hmm. so. Um, is Cecile still on the call? Because someone replied to her about looking for bird guides. I don't see her. Yes, she, she is. is. Oh, good. Um, did you see there was a reply to you in the chat? From uh, Barb? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, thank you. I okay. will figure that out on Facebook, maybe? Yeah, that's what it was from Facebook. World Girl Birders. Yes. Okay. And there was a question about Don's um, topic about bird songs. Um, some people saw the bird song topic in the observer, but I believe you had a computer crash and lost that program. So we weren't able to change the observer, but we did change our Facebook posting. Um, hopefully, Don, have you sent your computer off to get your programs off of yes, it? Yes, they said it could take anywhere from three to six weeks, and it's been five already. Okay, so That's... someday we'd love that bird song program. If oh, you get it I back. hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope I got a lot of stuff on there I need. 30, 30 years of bird records are on that computer. Oh, oh my. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I, I'm going to speak up again. I just recently moved from Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County to Baltimore. I've been here two weeks. I'm seeing a lot of ospreys out over the harbor. But um, so I'm going to be learning some new shorebirds and birds out here. But it's really fun for me to be able to connect back with people I know and the area I know so well. So um, I'm gonna stay connected with all of you folks if I can. And uh, I'll, I'll, you know, that's, people ask me, how are you gonna connect with new people there other than walking my dog? But one of the first things I thought of is birding in an Audubon Society group. So absolutely. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully I can meet some people who like the same things like I do, like mm -hmm. all of you. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, that's it. Jessica can tell you about when she moved to Ann Arbor from the UK. Yeah, we moved from London and the, I think the day we were off the plane, I had already signed up for Juliet's um, May Count bird um, surveying. And so my husband thought we were insane, but I yes. found my flock, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were fortunate enough to, to scoop Jessica up and get her involved with our birding community right away. And we're so Laura. Grateful. Laura, you'll have the same in Baltimore. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I hope so. I met okay. him at Washtenaw Audubon. <gasps> oh, really? that's she how the on, two of you met? came on a field trip that I led. To Whitefish Point. <laughs> I did not know that. Oh, Which is yeah. where we are right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, square Whitefish right now. Mm. Excellent. It, Susan, was 37, Michael, it was 37 oh, degrees this morning. Oh my. Yes. <laughs> it, it was, but but on, on a positive note, um, the cold weather has kept the mosquitoes to totally negligible. <laughs> so, it's good for people. It is. I don't know about the blueberries, but it'll be good for people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How long have you been married? We'll be married for 34 years, I think. Something like that. Congratulations. 
I didn't well, know yeah, you 34 met. because it was it was a cicada year. So oh, we, know, wow. we know every 17 years exactly when it is. The cicadas <laughs> should be around. Don, your program was very fun tonight. Yeah. A little different. You. And very it was different, fun. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very it. much, Don. Don, thank you so much. And, and a reminder to all folks, we love when people come to our programs. You don't have to be a member, but if you ever do want to support us as members, um, go to washingtonautobahn.org and you can join or, or donate. So thank you. And Don, thank you. And everyone, mm -hmm. let's give Don a round of applause one more time. Yay. Thank you so much, Don. Thanks, Don. Also, our website is, our new website is under construction. So Please let us know if there's something that's not working or if you want us to show something that we're not showing at this time yet. Oh, Jessica, I, I took the survey already. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks again, Don. It was really great to have your presentation for us. Well, you're welcome. I appreciate yeah. it. You bet. Um, All right. Have a great summer, everyone. Bye. Thank you. See you, you in too. September. Bye-bye. Bye. I left. Jess, you can stop recording. I think.